Hey guys, Eileen Vick here for Teaching Adult Coloring with Eileen Vick. It is Sunday, May 16th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time and I am live, ready to get my coloring on, ready to be here for the next three hours. Woohoo! All right. Looking to have a lot of fun. Ah, there we go. Hi, Wanda. Hey, Melissa. Facebook is being wonky again tonight. This is the third attempt I made to get broadcasting. Yikes. But this too shall pass. Okay. So let me go ahead and go over calendar real quick. We've got two contests closing out tonight. The Rose Contest ends, which is the one that Mar uh, Melba Carter drew for us. And... We've got the face contest, which was from Claire. So be sure that you check those out. And then in one week, we have got the hearts contest ending. That is a biggie, guys. $100 gift certificate from Helen Elliston. Hi, Christy. So welcome to everybody that's here, if you're in the room or not, or if you are just watching. Cool beans. All right, so tonight I am working on Enchanted Forest by Johanna Bosford. And I may pop over to something else later on. We'll see how the mood strikes me. So we'll have some fun with that. Zoom in. Zoom in. Let me get my voice control going here. Zoom in. There we go. Okay, so I'm working on the mushroom and the castle and the clouds with the tree. Hello, Melba. Hey Melba, I had to run some errands today and I wasn't able to get in touch with you, but I really want to coordinate with you. Sorry about that, sweetie. All right, so I'm working on Enchanted Forest. Okay. That sounds good, Melba. So I wanna do something different with the mushroom in this particular piece. And basically what I'm going to do 
is color this mushroom like a standard mushroom. So we'll do something that a little bit different. Zoom in. Now, I know this particular piece has little grass images in it. Yeah, I'll tell you, Melba, we've got some great entries. So I'm going to work through this. And we've got some teeny places here, but that's okay. That's all part of coloring. Oh, that's good, Maddie. They are beautiful, Melba, aren't they? Isn't it fun seeing your artwork colored? I thought you'd get a kick out of that, Melba. Zoom out. Zoom out. All right, so as you can see what I'm doing here, is I'm going through and I'm starting to color in the mushroom in traditional mushroom colors. And guys, please don't forget to share this broadcast to your timeline. Oh, yay, Melba. So you are going to go ahead and work on a coloring book. I didn't know what you'd finally decided about that.
So Melba, tell us what you got in mind to do that. What's the general theme? Okay guys, everybody see now how I'm working down this red on the mushroom. Okay, now like I said, it's going to be a little dicey getting these colors here, but I think it's worth it. Hey, Rhonda. Rhonda, Rhonda. Yeah, I thought I'd go with a traditional red pearl. And I think that this is going to look really, really cool doing this this way. And I've got a really good red. I was reading uh, some comments the other day from someone that they said that they didn't feel that their pencils had a good red in them. This is from, oh, Arteza, or Arteza Cherry Red, color 137. Oh, okay, Malba, that's cool. Well, Melba, you know then that you're going to have to send me copies so I can feature them here, right? Okay, so what I'm doing, guys, is I'm just kind of doing a little arc here. And have this curve so I can figure out where my red's going to look really cool on this. Yeah, I think on that that's looking pretty cool right there. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, happy day. <laughs> So now I'm going to go with the traditional orange, and this happens to be a shuttle art, actually. Some of you have asked me about the pencils I use, different brands. Zoom in. Now, it's going to be a little bit different in blending these colors. because we don't have a lot of room, open room. But I think we can still pull it off. I'm batting a hundred with pearl. <laughs> so anywhere where my red and my orange come together, we need to blend that. You want that transition to be as smooth as possible. You know, Melba, that might be an idea for you as far as the coloring book is concerned. Is to do one that was strictly brought in from suggestions from people. I wonder how that would play out. Okay, now you guys know that I like to keep my areas clean. Now guys, notice how I'm blending the orange in with the red.
And also, you know, when I always tell you about changing colors, to not have that color change behind something. So in other words, when it comes up to an object like this water here, we want the color change. I don't want to bring the orange all the way down. Everybody remember that when I taught me talking about that. I want that yellow to start right here. Now, this one's a little tighter, so it's a little hard to do that. But, we're going to make it work. So Melba, how do you want people to reach you? With their book ideas. Just send you a direct message. Yes, Pearl. Um, a lot of mushrooms I do. I go red to orange to like a gold color, yellow gold color. Sometimes I'll even add a little brown to it. If you go more towards a gold color, this is a um, Brute Funner number 040, and it's a goldish color. This color here, so it's not a yellow yellow, it's a gold yellow. Oh man, this is looking so cool. It really is. At least I think so. Zoom out.
Oh, Wanda, that's very generous. What a nice offer for Melba. Oh, man. What do you guys think of that? Isn't that cool? And let me get these little rocks cleaned up. That'll teach me to add small detail to areas. Okay, now I'm going to take, I'm going to take, da 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 da. A light brown, which that one definitely is not. play with my browns here. And I'm just going to go ahead and tint that gold a little bit. Now, not much. But you guys know that I always, always, always talk about dimensional coloring. Zoom in. Oh, Sarah, okay, you had a great four hours at work. Three families told me thanks for caring for my parents. Super. I think your co-worker is jealous of you, Sarah. Have you ever thought about that? Now, I want you to see the brown that I'm putting in here. Zoom in. Zoom in. So, this is the actual brown that I'm putting on the yellow. See that there on white? But I'm going up into the yellow to give it that rich color. And then I'm going to
Well, Sarah, you can't control what people do, unfortunately. Just let it roll off your back. And I'm bringing this brown now into the mushroom edge. Now, don't forget that you can do your mushrooms in different colors. I've done it before. You can use blues. You can use greens. Basically, you need a light, a medium, and a dark color. Hey guys, please don't forget to share this broadcast. All right. Zoom out, zoom out, all right, everybody see how cool that's looking? I think it looks pretty cool. Now remember what I told you to get that shadow edge. You darken the edge. And blend that color in. Blending. And you can see from a distance how that's going to look. So I'm darkening the edge with my pencil and then I'm coming in and blending it in towards the center with the center zoom in being the lightest point okay
And while you're doing this, notice too that on a couple places, I'm going ahead and darkening that even more and like bringing it in. Just kind of add spots to the mushroom. You know how when you get a mushroom and you have those dark streaks on them? Alrighty. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my white pencil, not much. and highlight this and notice I'm not going straight down the middle right I'm following the curve of my darkened areas and just adding a little bit Zoom out. All right. Okie dokie. Now, it's going to look a little wonky for a while. By the way, what do you guys think now of my glitter tree since that's dried? Zoom in. Zoom in. Doesn't that look cool? Not to everybody's taste, but I like it. Zoom out. Zoom out. All right, let's get this stem colored in. I'm back to my original brown that I used before. Zoom in, zoom in, now I want you to notice how I'm adding, see these little brown areas? They're natural mushroom spots. And that's still with my lightest color. And I'm going to darken right underneath these diagonals. Now, I am very, very lightly, I don't want to use as much brown as I have up here. And this, have, this is a really dark brown pencil. 
So I'm going to come in very light with this. You don't need much at all. And I'm going to put just a little bit of shadow on this, on the edge. Not much. zoom in and I want you to notice too that when I'm bringing my shadow down here I'm bringing the shadow in a little bit like this see that I'm just angling in that shadow and darkening that in and that's going to give you some texture and look to the piece And I think I'm going to blend this. That line got a little harsh right there on the side. There we go. Zoom out. And then using a very dark, my same dark brown, I'll go ahead and color this in. And notice that I'm going over it several times. Zoom in. Again, you darken in with repetitive strokes and not with brute force on your pencils, guys. And also notice that when I'm coloring these bands, Watch this. I'm coming down and coming down just a little bit onto the stem. So I'm making like an S on here. Just one of those little subtleties. Look how cool that looks. Zoom out. Let me grab some water. Caught yourself doing that the other day. You're learning. Good. All right, so this little bulb thing down at the bottom. Zoom in. I don't really want to go with a dark color.
Okay, so I've got my gold, and then I'm going to go with my lighter brown, because I don't want my gold that bright. Everybody see how that's darkening this? And then I'm going to hit this with my Tombow, which is my little teeny tiny eraser. Just to make sure these leaves. Are clear. And I'll just catch those little spots where I accidentally erased. Now, I'm using my darkest brown. And coming in between these leaves a little bit. We're just going to shadow those. Not much. All right. So now with that darker brown, just a little bit under the leaves. Not much. And a little bit at the bottom here. All right. Look how cool that looks. Zoom out. Zoom out. Zoom out. So let's look at the whole thing now. So you can get it in perspective. good progress on this. And again, guys, if any of this isn't your cup of tea, that's fine. I'm sh just showing you the process. All right.
And remember how this was looking kind of wonky and kind of bleh. But hey, that's why I always tell you guys, finish your pieces. If you're unhappy with something, walk away from it for a while. Okay, zoom in. Zoom in. So we've got different greens for the different plants. I'll go ahead and do my shading here at the base of each leaf. Pretty. Now, on this other side here, I'm going to go ahead and use the same green. A little hard to use two greens on there. Hi, Rebecca. Hello, hello, hello. Shade on the tree behind the leaf, please. I'm sorry, Melba, I'm missing what you were saying. I didn't see your comment earlier.
the leaves on the plant should be cast in the shadow on the tree. Okay, do you mean on the mushroom stem? And are you talking about these leaves right here? Okay. So I'm using the one green here, and then I'm going to come back in with a lighter green on top. So basically what I'm doing here is every single set of different leaves, I'm using a little bit of different color. Now, if you're new to coloring and you're not comfortable with the shadowing, then just watch what I'm doing. And let's see here. And what Melba is talking about is just going a little bit darker around your leaves. Alright. Now, I have Buku green pencils. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and pick out my different greens. Randomly, just to make sure that I've got different greens on my leaves. Now, if you want to go with more uniform coloring, that's fine. It's your piece. But I like to use just a little bit different greens just to break it up a little. Totally up to you guys. Okay. And while I'm at it with the shadows, we can do a little bit right there too as well.
cool. Let's get our little inchworm done. So I decided to use marker on my inchworm because he's so teeny tiny. So I've got a purplish color here. zoom out oh man guys this is looking so cool I hope you're enjoying this all right let's get some watercolor down here Now, notice that I'm coloring. Zoom in. One side of the water droplet, for the most part. I mean, it just depends on how big they are. And then I'm going to come back with a, with a, uh, <laughs> a, uh, a darker blue. And get that other side there. Very subtle coloring. But look how rich that makes this look, guys. And I'm blending the two colors together. Just a little too hard. Exacto knife to scrape away that. All right, let's try this again.
Oh, how cool is that? All right. Zoom out. And remember, these were the little water pondy things that I drew in earlier when I started this project with the drops coming all the way down. And we'll go ahead and mingle that blue, darker blue. Actually, I'm going to change this color. That's a little more purple than I want. Hey, boo -boo. <laughs> oh my. There we go. That's what I wanted. That's what I should start saying, is if I, if I make a mistake, I pull the yogi. Hey, boo-boo. <laughs> That's right, cellophane tape will pull mistakes like that. Now we're just hinging at water down here. But I am using the two different colors. And I'm very lightly going to blend those smooth. Don't over blend it, guys. Okay, zoom out. And I'll go ahead and just hit this grass a little bit with green. 
Nothing spectacular here, but we got our little green sprouts. Again, I'm going to use two greens. We're in pretty good shape. Okay. Zoom in. So we've got our little details now on our mushroom. Zoom in. So I've got these two little mushrooms here. I'm going to put a little red on top. And then orange. Yeah, Mar uh, Melba, that's exactly what I'm thinking about doing. I'm just not there yet. Brilliant minds, that's right. And again, two shades of green, guys, on my leaves. Darker on the bottom. And we got ourselves a little bunny wabbit. All right. Katie, hi. So a little bit of light brown on that little bunny rabbit. 
and just a little tint of darker brown just to give them some depth he's a little hard to do anything with but hey he's there we color him All right, tree trunks. little bit of darker brown underneath these little U's yes it's worth the time see how I outlined that guys And a little bit of shading. Take your time on these smaller pieces, guys. Well, well worth it, really. All right. green leaves on our little guys here and a little bit of dark green Teeny tiny, but worth it to fix it. Not fix it, but to color it. Katie, Katie. All right, zoom out. Zoom out. Zoom out. So we've got these little teeny tiny rocks. Zoom in. Zoom in. So I'm going to hit those with a light gray and then I'll show you a little trick. I had actually seen Claire do this a long time ago. Now, I hope you can see this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 
a backward C on the right hand side of each little rock. Zoom in. Let's see if we can get you to see this. See that? Now these are pretty small, but you want to try and blend that over. But everybody see now how that gives us this some dimension. Takes two seconds, looks great. Don't get heavy handed with it. <laughs> All right, so let me pop you up here. Some of these are pretty tiny, but still, we've come this far with it, right? So I want a super sharp point on my darkest pencil. And hopefully you can see this. Doesn't take much at all. And what a big difference. Isn't that cool? Get that piece of pencil out of there. And by the way, guys, don't ever, ever brush your piece with your hand. You don't, you don't want to do that. Zoom out. Keep your hands off your piece as much as possible. So a little backwards C. And guys, please don't forget to share this broadcast on your timeline so others can enjoy.
that way for those of people that you know that maybe are home alone and would enjoy a little companionship and fun. Okay, everybody see how cool these looked as opposed to this. See the difference now? Big difference. All right. Teeny tiny ones, just a little line. More of a smudge than anything else, but it works. Oh, guys, look at that. Zoom out. What do you think? Throw me a thumbs up if you like it. Look how cool those little rocks look now. A little bit of a pain in the butt, but hey. <laughs> it works. It works. Okie dokie smoky. Oh, wait a minute. I got two fish to do. Zoom in. Got my fish. All right, let me put a little more blue in there, bluish green. Right tip of the bottom mushroom. Right tip of bottom mushroom, the little rock. Mm. Pearl, can you help me narrow that down a little bit more? Did I miss one of the rocks? Oh, exactly, Rhonda. The detail is what makes these so enjoyable. You just get lost in doing it, and, and you're rewarded with a beautiful picture. Right tip, right tip of bottom mushroom. Oh, 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 I got it. I got it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And guys, Rhonda has, has hit this, you know, hit the nail on the head here. You get so lost in doing these cute little details.
and you stop thinking about all the other garbage that's going on. Got a pearl, thank you. You know, as I've been doing this for you guys, I've thought of absolutely nothing but this picture. Okay, now we got her. We got her done. <laughs> oh, that's good, Rhonda. Yay. Okay. Zoom out. I'm thinking we're looking pretty good on this, guys. Now, I'm going to keep this background very simple. Let me get some of my pencils put away so I don't scatter them all over the place. So Katie says, I got to color today for the first time in 10 days, then you took a long nap. See, Katie, it relaxed you. So I'm glad I took the time to make this a mushroom mushroom. That was fun. So I'm going to get, let's see, I'm going to get what, my chalks out. Now, if you don't have the Faber-Castell chalks, which is what I'm using, Use your eyeshadow, guys. And if anybody has any question about using eyeshadow that you've not done that before, ask. Walmart, go to the dollar store, get some inexpensive eyeshadows, and you can use those. Okay. So, I think I'm going to put a little bit of yellow behind my birds. Now you can take an X-Acto knife and scrape off your color.
Ooh, that's pretty. Don't need a lot. And I want you to notice that I'm doing this on the birds a little bit off center. Zoom in. You don't want everything to be perfect, okay? So the bulk of my sun is over here with the birds basically in the upper left-hand corner. Now I'm going to add a tad of orange. I mean, not much at all. And then just brush away my excess. Oh, pretty. And then I'm going to go ahead and I think what I'll do is I'll just play with the bottom first. Let me pull you out. So we'll go with a very light tan. Now in this case, I'm gonna take my chalk and I'll draw a little bit of line like that. See how I'm doing that? And trust me, you don't need very much here. So I'm doing like a little touch and rubbing it in. And wherever you want a softer background, you take your knife and you shave off whatever color that you want. And if you end up getting into an area that you didn't mean to put your brown on, just hit it with your eraser. And then I'm going to take a little bit brown, more darker brown, more darker brown, redundant. And pop that in here. Keeping it very loose and casual. And then just bring it up as high as you think that you need it.
And guys, whether you're using eyeshadow or chalks, please, 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 tiny, tiny bit until you get used to your colors. Notice I've got a little bit darker right in here, which looks kind of cool. So I'll emphasize that. And you can make little splotches of dark if you want. You want it to look scruffy, groundish. Oh, Miss Pearl, good night, good night, good night. Carry your phone around with you and listen to this while you're finishing up going to bed. All right, see how casually I put that down, guys? So what I've done now is I've anchored visually the mushroom to the ground. There you go. Now, if you've gotten a little bit of your eyeshadow on any of your pencil, take an eraser and just tap off the excess eyeshadow. And if you don't press too hard, your pencil will stay on there. So, see, on top of my greenery here, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it just gets rid of that eyeshadow. There we go. Another really great way to do that is with your gummy eraser. You know the one that I'm talking about? You stretch it like Play-Doh. And if I had that right in front of me, I'd be using that. Okay. Zoom out. So now we can go ahead and put in our sky. And I'm keeping this very simple. So I'm going to start out with a light blue. Let me show you that. Now what you want to do is you want to build up your sky color. Thank you. 
And what I'm doing in a couple spots, zoom in, is I'm putting a little bit of extra blue just to darken that just a little bit. So even though that this is my lighter blue, I still have some areas that are a little bit darker. So you can start to see now how this is coming into play. Oh, pretty. Can everybody see this? Absolutely beautiful, guys. Again, chalks, pastel chalks, or eyeshadow. zoom out. Can everybody see? How I've got my blues here. Okay, now I'm going to take a slightly darker blue. Good night, Miss Melba. Good night, Melba. Melba, do you like the sky? Now make sure that you keep your chalks nice and swirly on the page. You don't want to glob them in one spot, right? Now, these blues are very close together. But they're still different.
And if you get a little bit of your color bunched up at all, just go ahead and take your eraser and very, very lightly erase it out. And that is the cool thing about chalks and eyeshadow is that you can fix this stuff. Okay. Now I'm going to go with one more blue and you'll see why in a minute. So closer to the top of the page, I'm going to add one more shade of slightly darker blue. So I had a very, very light blue, a medium blue, and then this is my darker blue. And notice that I'm being very zoom in, zoom in. Notice that I'm being very sparing with my last blue. All right, let's not do that. Now, I've got a little blotch of blue here that I want to get rid of, so I'm going to go ahead and erase that. And just smooth that. zoom out Now, I've got a bottle of hand sanitizer, and I use that to clean my fingers of any excess uh, chalks. Seems to work out really well. All right, now, one last little color that I'm gonna put on here. And you should always think about this when you're doing skies is I'm going to add just a little bit of purple. Not much. But just a little bit to tint that blue. and it's gonna make it look pretty cool. Everybody see this portion right here as opposed to over on the left?
please do not add a lot and experiment with it. And if you're not sure about adding your blues and your purples, get a piece of paper out and experiment with it. I mean, I am hardly putting anything on here. Now, you have to be careful when you put your purple on that it doesn't blotch, okay? And one little thing that I noticed is I didn't get my blue in my trees, so we'll go right there. And a little bit of blue underneath my glitter tree. Oh man, guys, what do you think? So we got the darker mushroom, or the mushroom that looked like a mushroom. Uh-oh, we got some angry faces going up there. Well, sorry you don't like it, but I just wanted to show you the techniques. You can use your own colors. And actually, the only last thing that I'm going to do is go through here and go back over my birds. Zoom in. There we go. So we redefine those because they got all that eyeshadow on it. Zoom out. So I think I'm going to call this one done. Again, very simple background. Colorful. We have our little glitter tree you know and there are also the pearl drops that you can use 
liquid pearl to add dimension to your trays. All right. Calling this one done. Hope you had fun getting some learning from it. And I hope you got something out of it. A few different techniques. All right, let me put my chalks away before I dump them, which I've done once. Finished both pop contests today. Now you're pooped. Okay. All right, so this is Helen, excuse me, Johanna Bosford and Shannon Forrest. And there are some ideas for you for coloring. All right. Let me pull out one that I have been working on a while back. I'm sure you guys all remember this been having a lot of fun with this. This is from the America book by uh, Kevin Vokes. And I need to grab some water. All righty. We've left these guys kissing so long now, I thought, you know, we better come back and finish this out. So I'm working on the buildings in the background. And this one, guys, remember I was showing you how to color white. sure Rhonda you know because I don't know when I started this but don't forget you can go into the search into the little um, search bar in the magnifying glass and if you type in Kevin Vokes keyword keywords you got to put in the word keyword K-E-Y-W-O-R-D, and then type in Kevin Vokes. It'll pull up all the videos that I did, especially showing how to color a white suit like this sailor suit. Do you recognize the picture, Rhonda? Oh, you don't recognize this picture? Okay. Well, this is from World War II. It's a very famous picture. It's called The Kiss. And it was celebrating the fact that the world was 
world that the war was over and this sailor grabbed this young lady and kissed her and people got a bunch of pictures of it. It was just the epitome of joy that everybody was feeling at the time. And Kevin Vokes, in his book called America, the coloring book, captures images like this for coloring, like the American Eagle and the flag <coughs> and um, military men, just all sorts of neat ones, firefighters. Oh, now you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, the trick of this picture, guys, is you don't want to use too, too many bright colors. Zoom in. Because this is 1945. And it was during the war, and everything was toned down. So, in order to capture the mood of this picture, I'm using more muted colors. I so hate that when my when a point keeps falling off of a pencil. All right. Actually, we had a lot of fun doing this picture.
All right, let's get this smoothed out. Zoom out. Boy, my pencils just want to really be in this camera shot, don't they? <laughs> thump, thump, thump. So again, zoom in, zoom in, yeah, my, my cats are older cats, so actually they are zonked out on my bed. My cats, and I happen to have a king size bed. And I have a heated mattress pad. So, I guess between mom and a warm bed, they're opting for the warm bed. <laughs> oh my. Okay, they do have a grand life, and that's the way they're going to have it till their last breath. Hopefully they don't have any arthritis problems. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so on this building, I'm sticking with the more subdued colors. Alright, so these look like windows, I believe. Not sure.
And you know, guys, you're going to run into this every once in a while. Zoom in. Is when you're not sure about what something should be, take your, your best guess. And don't worry about it. I mean, I know you're going to take your best guess, but don't worry about it. I keep getting messages from people about their coloring because they stress over what color something should be because they don't know what it is. And honestly, you really can't worry about that. So I'm going to take this brown and this darker brown and I'll go ahead and emphasize my edges. And then bring this in just a little bit. Oh, Wanda, welcome back. Okay, zoom out, look at that guys, zoom out, zoom out, getting a nice do on this piece I believe. So let's talk about how what we're going to do for those windows. Windows. Let's 
zoom in. And again, just keep your area clean. And again, guys, just a very light blue. Nothing spectacular. Simple. Okay. And really for windows, guys, I wouldn't, I would recommend just not doing anything past that. I'm just going to hit it with a blender pencil just to smooth that out. All right. Okay.
in just a little bit more right there. And a little more here. Oh, and, 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 and. Those little guys. Zoom out. Okay, so this piece is coming along beautifully. And we've got one more little area to concern ourselves with. And this area right here seems to be a track. With the trolley car. So I'm going to play with that in grays, grays and browns, So this gray is kind of cool because it looks like a brown. It's a warm gray by Faber-Castell, color number 270. And when I first did this, I added in this line, this line, and then a lot of these little circles. And I'm going to add just a shade, not, not that one, just a shade of brown. Very lightly. zoom in and again I'm not concerned at all about any spectacular colors on this because the emphasis is on the couple and some of the people that were in the background So all of this here is really window dressing, no pun intended. Okay. 
And actually it wasn't clear exactly where the sidewalk was or where the other tracks were. So I had to draw in where I thought some of that was going. And again, I want you to stop second guessing yourself when you do stuff like that. You make your best guess and you run with it. Okay. Zoom out. And then I'm going to go ahead and just add a tint of gray on this background here as well. Honestly guys, none of it is super clear as to what is what. So, I'm assuming that most of it is street. Ooh. Looky there, we forgot a hand. But the really neat thing about this picture, guys, is it conveys beautifully what this is all about. And that's about our two central characters right here. And unless I'm missing something, I'm going to call this one done. Unless one of you eagle-eyed people see that I missed something. So what do you think of that one, guys? Started this up a while back.
we have our two central characters here. And I'm very happy with it. I think it conveys what it's supposed to convey. It's an old-fashioned look. Muted colors. We pretty much figured out what this street was doing. I'll tell you guys, this street was weird. And I think we got a good do on it. Yeah, I'm happy with it. I probably should color in this little part down here. And again, guys, I hope it gave you some ideas. I hope it taught you how to color white. And as always, I hope you learned something from it. All right, zoom out. Zoom out. So there we go, two pieces done tonight. Yeah, I'm hungry too, <laughs> snack time. All right guys, thanks so much for your time. I hope you had fun watching. And I hope you learned something. All right, guys. We're good to go. With 10 minutes to spare. Maddie, you're welcome for my time. My pleasure. All right, guys. This is Eileen Vick for Teaching Adult Coloring with Eileen Vick. Have a good rest of the evening, guys. You take care. All right. Joyous, joyous coloring, guys. Take it easy now. Bye.